What's up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys today we're going to be looking at the endless battles and let's kick things off with the spider king's guard first uh, we're currently number two so not bad at all um i did mess up earlier on in the season so we're at number three for total ranking but for season four we are number two and there's a big gap between me and number three and x beyond i'm coming for you boy uh, so let's let's get the first one going and i'll talk about the team comps that we're running the gear the builds and just the setup as well so first off we've got um leo zane claire um aries and hemdall in the squad for vanguard you can see three people are in bug buster gear it makes a big difference. So definitely want to be farming that up from the uh, triangle. Try and get as much as that as you can. So this is going to look a bit strange, but for some reason, I do more damage from Kung Fu Panda than I do from Hagridon. And the reason for this is if you look at the middle row. So here, middle's just HP um, and stuff that doesn't help. But if we click on Kung Fu Panda, we're getting that extra attack. So the attack is going to slightly bump up the damage from the two middle champions. So that's going to be Hemdall and Claire. And actually, we should probably put Zane in there because he will do more damage than Hemdall. And then we've got the dominant nucleus where you're like, well, that's for summoners. Wrong. So let me just rewind. So Prying Eyes should be the best one on my account for Vanguard. Usually it is, and he usually does the most damage. However, we get a flat attack of 100 I say 1000k and if we come up to dominant nucleus it's 2000 attack flat attack that 2000 attack is actually making us do more damage than prying eyes so basically what you want to do is any mythical that is level 60 that is what we'll be using um obviously if you've got one that's got um like awakenings where you can do like more increased damage for vanguard take that instead obviously but level 60 mythical prototype will help you do more damage than an epic prototype, which kind of sucks, really. It sucks. Uh, Bloodthirsty Crest. This is so good for Vanguard. Really makes your damage go through the roof. Um, you can actually, everyone can buy this one. So if we just come to Recruitment, down to Divine Prototypes, and then go to the Exchange, you can buy this. So just a quick shout out, though. Dominant Nucleus always buy this one first you want your summoners to be the best in your account this is the best um prototype by a mile so save up these uh universal crystals and make sure you buy that first and then um probably my top five would be um what is it called again is it the blood bleeding chest uh what is it bloodthirsty crest so that's what you want to pick up definitely want to get that and then for the support one it doesn't matter so you don't need healers for any of the endless battles. You know, you're, um, they don't do any damage. I think they're literally just there to be hit. If we look at the HP bars, you can see they're fully topped up the entire fight. No one's dropping and no one's losing any HP. So it doesn't matter. All you want to do is focus on, focus on, focus on damage. We want as much damage as possible. And that's what we're aiming for. So you can see top three damage dealers are the ones all in bug buster gear. Uh, Zane currently on top. Nice. Putting him in that middle slot has actually helped him increase his damage by quite a bit. Um, so just sort of to go through these, um, uh, these Vanguard heroes. Leo is a red flag for me. He sucks. Um, like I've invested so much into him. He's got awakenings. He's got the best gear. He's got tempered gear. So he has the best gear out of all of them. And no matter where I put him, he underperforms. He doesn't do damage. Um, you can make him tanky, but what's the point? He's not a tank. Um, obviously, he needs to be in a hybrid build where he has HP and attack. So he's doing a bit of both. Well, surviving and killing people. But I just find him really underwhelming. Like there's no place that I can find him in the game where he's doing something great. Um, the next Ares. Ares has really surprised me. 
Um, maybe not in endless battles, but he does do a lot of damage in the triangle. Um, yeah, he is really, really good. So really surprised by him. Great damage dealer. Um, and again, very, very tanky as well. So yeah, he's like, yeah, really, really impressed me. Zane. Zane is incredible for PvP. An absolute beast. Um, definitely worth some picking up on. Um, Claire. She's still new to my account, so I haven't really tested her out and not used her in many places, so I can't really comment on her. Um, Hemdall, pretty good, brings like CC. Um, his HP will drop and then like sort of he self boosts, so just sort of comes back up. So pretty nice, does pretty good damage as well. But you can see here these two, it may be because they're not in bug buster gear, it's not fair to compare, but I always find Leo is doing the least for everything on my account. So next we'll move on to uh, Spider's King's Lair. Yep, this is the team. So instead of having all summon, uh, all energy heroes, we're using summoners. My summoners are so strong. I mean, like everyone should know by now, summoners are the best class in the game. Literally use them everywhere and they will, you know, pretty much use them everywhere. Um, but they do the most damage. So I've got Jax. Um, oh, I can never remember her name. I call... Is it Deja? Deja Vu? I could not remember. Uh, then we've got Anpu, um, Skino, and Raven. So with I would go for a full summon team comp, but uh, the other summoners I've got are Daniel and Sif, and they don't do as much damage as these two. So makes in, makes sense to have like a bit of a hybrid team, two energy heroes, and then the rest all in summoners. Again, rolling with Kung Fu Panda. Middle row is the best, so I've got my best two damage dealers in the middle. Uh, of course, Dominant Nucleus for extra damage. Also, like, again, I've just always invested in this. And when you get to 60 as well, if you get more copies of this, it actually helps you awaken. So you can, you know, that is a good way to basically improve your account really quick. Um, but yeah, getting extra crit rate, getting crit damage for, for everyone in the team. Ruler's Ring, you know, does, there's nothing here that's going to help benefit us, make us do more damage. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then... We take Soul Compass, it gives you a slight uh, damage bonus because our summoners are going to get a slight energy gain at the beginning of the fight. But other than that, that's it. So let's roll with it, guys. See what's going on. So, yeah, again, there's no, you know, there's, we don't need to worry about anything. We don't need to hit support. We don't need a tank. We can literally just tank it ourselves and just easily plow through this so if we come here you can see that um you know well first of all anpu is going to outclass everyone um he's just an absolute beast um can you see her name here it's really gonna bug me ah oh, deja vu deja vu she does um if it's like single target she will outperform anpu and if it's like loads of targets anpu will usually outperform her um, Jack's just pretty good all round. Um, you know, really good for PvP. Um, has anti charge, does decent damage, and is really tanky. Raven, I feel Raven reminds me of Leo. I find her really lackluster. Um, again, she's in really good gear. She is. Um, I forgot what it's called. You got a mortal. What's the next one? Extraordinary. She is extraordinary. Plus five, just because I've got loads of copies of her. And she's awakened. And, okay, she's outperforming Skino here. But he's not got an exclusive. He's mythic. And he's out-damaged her in, like, Sincero's Marsh and stuff like that. Loads of content I find Skino does better than Raven. Which makes no sense at all. Considering this, the difference in stats is crazy. It's crazy. And, um... Yeah, I think I prefer Skino as well. He's better for PvP as well. Um, so if assassins come in to like assassinate your support or your your damage dealers at the back row, he will push them back into the front, into the tank, and they're just going to get wrecked. So yeah, Skino, absolutely love Skino. Um, definitely want to... I've got other heroes in the pipeline, but he's on my to-do list to start uh, empowering because he's good. He's really good. And then the last team 
uh, is Lion Storm. So, of course, we're going against Leo, the trash. Um, so we've got two tanks in here, and then we've got our summoners again, so another hybrid team. So we are going to go with um, Kung Fu Panda. It's going to do more damage for us. Titan Hammer for our tanks. So basically, every time they get a knockdown, they do increased damage. So that's really going to help us. Um, this is the one time we can take a different... Well, we can take a middle prototype that's actually going to benefit us. So Company of Heroes is going to help us do extra bonus damage to the boss. And then again, Soul Compass just for the summoners to help bump up their damage. So again, you can see like summoners are stepping up to the plate. I literally just use them everywhere. Whenever I can, summoners are coming in and they are filling that role. You know, probably 90% of my teams either have one summoner in it or it's like, you know, four to five summoners. They are just on another level. Seriously, guys, need to make sure you invest in them. And again, we can see that Anpu is on top. Uh, Deja coming in next. And then Orthan is outperforming Jax, which is pretty impressive considering he's a tank. But he's getting that bonus from the hammer. And surprisingly, um, Dominant Nucleus isn't going to help too much with our um, summoner's damage here. I've sort of tested it. And you do get more from running the team this way. So that's fine. That's all good. And I did try, um, I can't remember what it's called, but the one built for tanks, with, is it Ubek, Arbeck, something like that. Um, but it just does not do as much damage. And look at Anpu go. Like literally 17 billion damage. <laughs> He's just on another level. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think out of every hero in the game, Anpu, as soon as you get him, well, you need to try and get him as first as, as soon as possible. Um, and then just invest, invest in him. Um, just he's a hard carry for all content. Um, I think the next one I'd give a shout out to is Orthan. Orthan as a tank has done so much for my account. Um, like God tier tank, you know, um, self revives. If other tanks dies, he can sort of like summon a copy of himself, brings in like a cleave with CC and, um, and he's tanky just yeah, all round beast. But um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everyone. But you can see we're getting some pretty solid numbers here. And Anpu, where are we going to finish? 30 billion damage. And can we get 32? Let's see. What's the, what's the final scores? And another new record. Um, so Anpu, 32 billion damage. 20 billion from, oh, I really want to see her name, Deja Vu. Um, so 19 billion. So he's, you know, he's done like a good 13 billion damage difference. Um, Jax, has, he's tripled Jax's damage and Orthan and then Pandemonium at the back. But still pretty solid. Everyone in this team is doing some work for us. So let's check out the builds. All right, guys. So we'll start off with the Vanguards. Start off with Zane. And I just want to point out, these builds are specifically for the endless battles, um, especially the bug buster gear. You can see he's got very, very low HP. If you use him in other content, he's probably going to die. Um, but because endless battle, your HP doesn't matter. We're going for full attack. All we care about is attack on him. So trying to stack attack as much as possible. A bit of accuracy is nice as well, but that's all that matters for this. Um, I'll show you my sort of general build as well for other content just so you guys get an idea of stats, but we've got some HP, we've got some accuracy, but for this one, all about that bug buster. So 26K attack, that's all that really matters. Um, I'm waiting for an event where when you boost using these runes, basically you get loads of points and you can basically get better rewards. So saving for that for the moment. Um, talents fully maxed as well. Leo. So Leo, just really lackluster in my opinion. We've got some attack, got some HP, and then we've got some more attack. Um, and all we care about on him is HP and attack. Nothing else matters. Um, again, same with the exclusive and talents fully maxed, but I don't know. I just find him really disappointing, to be honest. Uh, Claire Titan Hands. I do like the way she looks. Pretty baller. So 
We've got in Hero Set and Bug Buster. Um, HP on the gloves, which should ideally be attack, but I'm still farming up my, my gear. Then we've got um, attack percentage on the helm and the boots. Uh, 21k attack, 657k HP, and then 44 accuracy. Sort of show you guys the normal build as well. So we've got four pieces of Gorius. I'd love to swap this out for... Um, it's charge, isn't it? Yeah, for charge. But not for now, but it'll come down further. Further down the line, we'll get it. Um, so attack on the gloves, HP on the helm, and then attack on the boots. 919k HP and 22k attack. Um, same with the exclusive, and then mastery is fully maxed. So Ares, um, in bug bus start. Hmm. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, he did perform. He did perform well. I was just trying to remember now. Um, yeah, so attack percentage on the gloves and um, HP on the helm and then HP on the boots. Again, would love those to be all attack. Um, 942k HP and 18k attack. So I built them a long time ago. So we are in blessed gear, which gives us damage reduction. It's actually pretty decent on him. Pretty decent. Um, and Vigorious, of course. I would love to swap it out for a recharge as well. Um, farming it up as much as I can. 50% uh, HP on the gloves, accuracy on the helm, and then damage reduction on the boots. And you can see this is just like a solid build for sort of more general content. Maxed out on the exclusive, and then talents maxed out. And then last but not least, Hemdall, who's epic plus one. So... Vigorious and um, Hawkeye. So for that accuracy, so we've got HP, attack, and we need a bit of accuracy on him as well. So, sorry, attack, HP, and damage reduction. Exclusive is only plus 10. And then we're only to level two on the talents. Uh, move over to the tank. So Pandemonium, we've got... Um, opportunistic set and we're looking for hp accuracy and damage reduction so hp percentage on the gloves accuracy on the helm and then damage reduction on the boots exclusive or we can just bump that up quickly but again we're saving the red ones for that event and then talents are oh yeah no we're working our way through it working our way through it and then all fan my favorite horseman. Yeah, you can see like I've started to heavily invest in the gear. Everything's tempered. Um, HP, HP, and then damage reduction. You do want accuracy on him, but I'm getting away with it. At the moment, we don't need that much accuracy, so we skipped it on the helm for now. Uh, 2.3 million HP, and then 37 accuracy, and then damage reduction 68%. Exclusive to the max. And then talents maxed out as well. And I think we'll do energy heroes next. So Raven. Um, so she is in Sun Signet for crit rate. And then burst for extra damage. So 40%. Uh, well, going for crit rate on the gloves. When you get to like 100% or close to it, swap these out for crit damage. Uh, attack on the helm and attack on the boots. Uh, 287k HP, she's very squishy, um, and then 51k attack, that is massive, 68% uh, uh, crit rate, and then 12% crit damage, uh, exclusive on the way to be maxed out, and then talents fully maxed as well, and you can see like my uh, energy heroes is horrible, <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there guys, so Skino, um, Again, we've gone for, um, we've got a surge set on him and then overload. Um, crit rate on the gloves, attack on the helm, and then attack on the boots. 15k attack. So considering how big the difference is, like, was it 50k? That is a big difference. And he definitely outperforms her a lot, considering the stat differences. 45% uh, crit rate and then 44% crit damage. Uh, no exclusive either. And only level three for the talents. So that kind of shows how crazy good he is. And summoners. And we can finally find out her name. Let's skip. I just want to... What is it? Daji. Daji. Not deja vu. Daji. 
So Mythic plus one, and um, we've got her in a Madness set, which helps increase her damage. And we've got Sun Signet for that crit rate. Crit rate on the gloves, attack percentage on the helm, and then attack percentage on the boots. Um, 28k attack, 69% uh, crit rate, and then 12% crit damage. Uh, exclusive is to the max that it can go to now, because they're not legendary yet. And talents are down to four. Okay. So got to do my boy Ampu, the bringer of death. So he is also, so in a hero set with um, Surge, great way to go on him. He just, as you can see, he just pops off crazy, crazy damage. So crit rate, um, accuracy, and attack. Um, and Ampu does a lot. Accuracy is really good on him. You can stun enemies and push them back as well. Great for PvP. So we've got 48k attack, 111 accuracy, 55% crit rate, and then 16% crit damage. Exclusive maxed out, talents maxed out, and then potential actually is worth going all the way down to level 8 because we'll do more damage to insectoids as well. So that is great. And then Jax, who I must say, this ugly fish boy, oh, he's so good. I don't want to use him like a fish bazooka. What, what were you thinking? Um, but he is in an extraction set, which is great for survivability. And then Hawkeye for accuracy, uh, HP on the gloves, HP on the helm, and then damage reduction on the boots. 1.2 mil HP, 71 accuracy, and then 62% damage reduction. Uh, maxed out exclusive, and then full talents as well. Oh, and that's it. That's everyone. We've just done everyone. Well, that is pretty much the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps you guys progress in endless battles. Start to, you know, progress through the ladder. Get If you get better scores, you get way better rewards. So you guys can start to get some more universal crystals, get some more gene hybrid shards as well, and also divine prototype recruitment cards as well because they're all really really you know those are really good rewards so the the higher you can climb up the better rewards you'll get and also you know you can get some more things from the raffle shop as well but yeah thank you so much for watching guys please leave me a cheeky thumbs up make sure you smash 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 that subscribe and i'll see you all in a video soon peace